Hello, this is Mike Fauché, and today I'd like to take a quick look at Sophos version 18 Early Access Preview. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and don't forget to set the notifications so you'll be notified of all new content. Hope you enjoy the video. Today I'd like to do a quick overview of the new Sophos version 18 Early Access Preview. I haven't spent a lot of time on this, but I just kind of wanted to go over the highlights and some of the things that they have uh, changed in this upcoming version. So for starters, let's start with the firewall rules. Um, they actually renamed this now to say rules and policies as opposed to the firewall, but essentially it's the same thing. So let's um, go through some of the quick changes. The first thing that they've added is they've added a filter button. So if I look at the filter button and I click add filter, I can now add a specific filter that helps me manage my rules. So let's just try one. Pick web policy. And I'll pick security concerns. Add filter. As you can see, it's filtered my entire rule base down to just a couple, making it a lot easier for me to manage the rules and also make changes. It's um, not earth shattering, but it's a nice little benefit and, and makes it a little bit easier for you to, to work on. Along that topic, and let me get rid of the filter here so you can see better, is the ability to delete, disable, or enable rules multiple rules at the same time. So if I wanted to, I could select a couple of these rules and disable them all in one shot before I had to do them one at a time. So this speeds things up if you're experimenting um, or you're trying to troubleshoot. And one of the features that they've added as well, which I haven't had a chance to experiment with, and once I get the system fully configured and I start putting more traffic to it, I can actually test this out a little bit better because right now it's in a test environment. But if I look at if I look at a traditional rule, I now have the ability to add an an exclusion, and an exclusion is kind of an interesting approach. It's almost like a rule within a rule. So basically. If I have a rule that, say, allows all traffic from this particular network card, for example, or for all my media streaming devices, for example, I can add an exclusion that would actually block one or more of those devices. Um, and I'm just giving an example. There's, you know, multi different ways that you can configure that. But basically allowing you to reduce the number of rules by embedding an exclusion into a rule. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be, but it's kind of a nice feature that it's there. So going back to rules and policies, there's one other change they made. And again, this is probably more in the area of troubleshooting or trying to figure out um, where, you know, where your traffic is actually going. And that's the ability to reset your data count. So by resetting my data count, if I had any traffic going through this rule, and this is since this is in a test environment, there's not a lot of traffic going through it right now, but if I did have a bunch of traffic going through multiple rules, um, resetting the counter will allow me to see that, to ensure that the traffic's going where it's supposed to be. At least I could help me isolate a problem if there is one. One of the other features that I happen to like a, a little bit um, is, let me go over to network here is the ability to rename a um, one of your interface ports. And that's something that we could not do before. So if I go, for example, let me go ahead and hit te uh, test port number four. And if I change this to just my name, for example, I can now rename that port. It's going to warn me it's going to update the interface. I'm going to say OK. And as you can see from the list, it's taken me and it's taken that port and renamed it to the new name I gave it. So again, very flexible, um, allows you to kind of tune your physical ports so they might make a little more sense. Um, kind of in the same area, let's go back into the port here for a second um, and go to advanced settings. 
So along the same area, let's go back into the port settings and let's look at port number one, for example, which is the default LAN port. And let's look at advanced settings. And one of the features they added is the ability to support jumbo frames. So if you look here, you can set the frame size, um, go all the way up to 9,000 and before you were limited to 1,500. So you might find this useful if you're using jumbo frames. So at least you now have the ability to tune your network, you know, depending on the bandwidth. This is probably more of an enterprise thing. Um, I don't think a lot of people tune the MTU size in your home network. It's probably not all that necessary. Although you can experiment with it if you're if you're running a higher performance network. Uh, but predominantly it's going to be more in uh, high bandwidth applications. Okay, the next one. So one of the features they added, and this is uh, sort of unique in and of itself. Um, you may or may not find this useful. Um, I could see some potential with in certain home applications where you want to limit the amount of traffic to certain type of categories like social media for example. But they've added a feature called quota and if you look here let me go down to my one of the filters I created. So if you look here uh, we've always had the ability to block and to allow but now we have the ability to add a quota. And the quota is both available for HTTP and HTTPS. And the quota is actually assigned to a category. And I haven't quite got as far as to figure out how that all works yet. But basically, you can set, cata you can set um, quotas. And let me show you what that looks like. So you can see that, you know, with you have the ability to create a whole bunch of customized quotas. So you can restrict um, the usage per category to a certain number of hours. So again, kind of useful. Um, might be might be useful in an environment where you know there's a whole bunch of bandwidth being consumed towards either social media or you know some other site. You can actually put restrictions on them. The restrictions are put on by you, the administrator. But once the restrictions are put on, the user can decide how they're going to use that. So if they've been given 100 hours, they can decide how to spend that 100 hours. It can be, you know, at uh, all at once or it can be spread out. You know, it depends on the configuration that you set up. But it's kind of, again, I, this is something I'm going to have to play around with and see how well this works. So... In terms of as far as I got for this first video, that's pretty much it. There is um, some enhancements that have been made to alerts and notifications, which I haven't had a chance to play around with because I need to get this deployed in order to test out some of this stuff. Um, they've made changes to the IPS, which I haven't been able to test out. And they've made some log viewer enhancements, which again, I haven't been able to test out because I'm um, um, until I get this actually connected and running live. So I'm kind of proceeding with some level of caution here. And that's pretty much it. There's, there's a bunch of little subtle changes and we'll go over this in, in multiple videos. This is just the first part. Um, as time, you know, as time permits, I'll be releasing additional videos that kind of cover some of the other features and maybe get a little deeper into some of the features they've already announced. So, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed a quick preview of the version 18 early access preview. I'll be posting additional videos as we go along and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notification icon so you'll know when the new content's available. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you on the next video.